podcast is powered by the plug. I'd still lick them. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, new fetish. Lick new my fetish. lick my eye wrinkles. Well, I, I did like a TikTok filter that was like, I'm not okay, but, and then it tells you what your butt is, and mine was beautiful wrinkles. So I guess people want to lick them. I lick it. I'd put my face in it. <laughs> <laughs> Just smashing know. your face into my eye wrinkles, like oh. oh yeah. I feel like at the end of all of porn, I'm probably gonna be a freak. Like I feel like there's like I've opened Pandora's box. Like box. I was already freaky before porn, but like now it's like I'll start doing things. Like when I did the Futo World, and I was like. I was like, oh, come here, kitty, kitty. Like, let me feed you your milk. And then, like, let's do all this stuff. I was like, good Lord, why am I really turned on all of a sudden? And she was like, I am too. I was like, and the set assistant was like, good luck going back now. I was yeah. like, yeah, there's no going back. There's no return for me. So it's, it's so funny how that works. Cause like, I, I never knew, like, I was always horny, but I didn't have like, kink or like I didn't know what different kinks and stuff like that were and then you just do so many things in the industry and I guess it's like guys who can't stop watching porn yeah has to get like more and more intense yeah like once you try something you're like well I don't need that all the time but I definitely am gonna want that again oh yeah like that's definitely coming circling back around like if you like don't be surprised if I'm like yes like you know when people are like oh like you're probably gonna say no but like I kind of like this thing and you're like you know what crazy thing is is I'm prepared for that yes (laughs) Uh, I I did this whole custom video for this guy and shout out it was it was really fun because he wanted to basically have it be like he woke up in my body like Freaky Friday Mm -hmm. so I just got to play the part of like a guy waking up in a woman's body. I think I did a really good job. Probably did a better job than he could ever imagine. (laughs) And with that being said, welcome everyone to another episode of Hustle Bunny. I am your host, Miss August Guy, and today we are in the studio with the legendary, beautiful, your favorite redhead, Miss Molly Stewart. Hi. (laughs) Welcome. Stop licking my toes. Yeah, so we're coming to you guys live from Vegas. Um, I guess a quick story. Stories. Like I literally met Molly last month in Miami for Xbiz. Um, we were working with this company, the My My Club, um, which is an AI company. I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about it before. But yeah, we just kind of had like an instant connection, and now here we are making things happen for us. Yes, and matching outfits. Too. And matching <laughs> outfits. That's not a bad thing. I feel like we're gonna start taking like those awkward JC Penny photos. I'm really down for that. I actually really <laughs> want to do. I want to get like the old like Argyle sweaters and just like go in like big horn rim glasses and just off into the distance yeah you're just <laughs> so good it's always that smile too like it's never a good one like, you're just like i've never smiled before your eyes are a little bit cross <laughs> you're in the doll eyes <laughs> Christmas 2024 keep a lookout for it oh. like it's nothing sexy it's just gonna be that that would be so great to do like a JC Penny style photo for like every year for like a calendar like so yeah. one a month you have like a Valentine's <laughs> one you have the Christmas Thanksgiving oh man it would just be That'd awkward be so then awkward prom photos and we're just like holding each other we're just <gasps> yes. like yes yes <laughs> putting on the corsage i don't yeah. know i've never been to prom <laughs> i've never been to prom either so i'm assuming that's what's going on yeah that was our connection it was like homeschooling as well because it yeah. makes a lot of sense <laughs> it does make, yeah that's why number one we're horny because who gave me a, a computer in my bedroom for hours on end to be just researching things that's you'll what be you, fine you'll be yeah. fine yeah it's the internet what could go wrong and it was like we had gotten in the, like that was like the beginning of like when the internet was really like a thing yeah you know what I mean? Or the start of the internet, which is kind of sad, but also like I, it feels good to relate to someone who remembers dial up because oh, yeah. it's like you never think that there'll be a time that you're old enough that you'll be talking to someone and they don't know the sound of dial up. Or like the fact that like you've crashed a computer because like we had like the one family computer and it's like you crashed a computer because like you were like trying to download shit off of like LimeWire or you're like watching porn and like you didn't know how to clear the history at the time. Mm -hmm. So like hopefully you had a brother so you could blame it on him. That's what I did. I blamed it on my brother. I was the oldest so I had to figure it out. I had to figure out how to clear all the cash and the cookies and the history and everything. And I officially I eventually learned. I eventually learned and honestly like I'm so like shout out to my brother for taking those L's so many times. 
<laughs> you don't know this, but it was me. I guess like now, I feel like now like everybody knows because they're like, oh, now that like they're like doing detective work and it's like, oh, it was her. Look at her now. Look at what? <clears throat> Yeah, so yeah. sorry. Sorry, big bro. Mm -hmm. I mean, sorry. I was, um like, the first time I ever saw a penis was because, like, you remember Dick's Sporting Goods? Yeah. So it was, like, back in the day of the internet. And I play, was in sports. My brother was in sports. And my mom comes in, and she's like, don't go to dicks.com. What do so, you go? So, of course, dicks. I had to. Yeah. And what did you see? Dicks. Like, but like, but like, what was it though? Was it just like pictures of dicks at the time, or was it like pornos? No, or like, I, it was like literally like dicks, just like photos of different dicks. That's how you know it was the start of the internet. Dicks.com. Yeah. Like they it's kept it dicks. so simple. Like you didn't even have to like think about what it was. Like you see now, we're like, so what was it? Because like now things are just so like diluted. No, no like, it what, was were they like, docking or what? And it's like no, just like dicks. Like I rate now for a living. <laughs> <You're> like. <laughs> <laughs> It all, comes full dicks, it all comes full circle. My job is dicks.com. Dicks.com. Just dicks. Like, it's simple. Like, it's that simple, guys. Dicks.com. <laughs> you know, I did that too. I feel like I didn't know how to spell vagina. So I did like Virginia. Virginia. Oh, yeah. Virginia. <laughs> And I could not for the life of me for like a while get to the vagina. So I was like yeah. trying to figure it out. But then it was like, that's before I feel like, um, like autocorrect was like really a thing. Right. Oh yeah. I, I remember yeah, like Clippy. I remember him from where do you remember? Clippy? Yeah. I remember Clippy. <laughs> he was fire. Yeah. And then like, um, YouTube was on hinge too. Cause two girls, one cup was on YouTube. Oh yeah. People don't realize that. Like, YouTube, like, there was a guy who, like, sliced his nipple off. Do you remember him? Mm -hmm. And then there was a guy that put the, um, not the catheter, but I guess catheter in his dick hole. I think it was the same dude. Was and it? he was, I, I feel like it was the same guy. Oh. Because it was, oh. A, this was, I guess, POV was a, th <clears throat> I guess that was a P, because I don't think I saw the dude's face. I think it was just, like, the waist down, like, the have stomach ever, down. I've ever seen the guy who puts the glass bottle in his butt and it shatters. Uh, no. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just like want to know, like there. <laughs> I just need answers. Like I just want to be like, so like, what were you thinking? And like, what was like the sensation? Like, what was going through your brain? Because I have these friends from Portland, and they do. There's like this. Um, you probably heard of it. I I always forget the name of it, but there's like this show where they um I actually talked about this with like Inca Winters, where like they do this um show. It's just like you got a ticket to this movie. You can't talk about it. You can't film it. You can't record it. And it's just people who make these like five to ten minute videos of like sexual fantasies and it's just all kinds of crazy stuff and they just burn the film afterwards and like that's it if you what? got it you saw it you can or you know so a couple of my friends um they're from there and they said they went up there and they're like yeah there was a guy who did the um he pushed out m miniature bowling balls out of his butt what? but i'm also like how did you get to that point yeah like, what were you doing to, like, realize that, like, I could fit that in there? Yeah. Because I just want to know. Like, I just want to know. Because I'm, like, I'm not really intrigued at that <clears throat> point. And they were, like, because I was, like, you saw, like, the cavity, obviously. And I was, they're, like, yeah. yeah. And I was, like, it, like, it's very traumatizing. But you can't, like, really react to the video. Because, like, the whole thing yeah. is, like, you got to sit there and just kind of, like, take it in. Yeah. And well, so like, did he. <laughs> no, God. Oh, yeah. He took it all. <laughs> He took that literally balls deep. Like that's literally balls Bowling deep. Bowling balls deep. Oh, because I'm like, dude, that's like, I'm like, what were you doing? Because like, I can think about like for myself, I was like, okay, like a cucumber, the end of my bed. Like, you're not like, oops, I fell a bowling ball. Ooh. Like, and then like you had to like flip right in. Yeah, like, like the South Park episode where um, what is it, Paris Hilton, how she like eats everything up her butt or do you know which one i'm talking about it was the um it was like the was it the local gay and he had like all those yeah, things mr slave mr slave like he was going battling against some celebrity and it was paris that, Hilton. Was it? i do remember that <laughs> and i think like didn't he like eat her up with his yeah, butt yeah 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 mr slave could take anything a bowling ball would be nothing to mr slave he has two in there right and then now, he had I lemmy think. winks had lemmy winks running around in there mr <laughs> lemmy winks yeah crazy <laughs> This is that's where they got the inspiration from. Too yeah. much South Park. Too much South Park. What are they doing to, to the generation? To get to that point to be shoving up bowling balls up your ass. But you know what? I, when I was camming during COVID, I did streaming and 
there was like the number one person on there all the time was like this older um this like older woman and she was just like sitting there smiling and she was a little heavy set and she had her like bowling pins and she was like fucking herself with bowling pins not like small plastic ones oh like legit, real big. legit like big how ones. far I never was a, I never paid to go inside the oh. show. I just like, I remember I clicked on one of her live streams cause I was like, what's going on here? And like, I feel like there's like a point where it's like not sexy anymore. And now it's just like, people are watching it's for like theatrics. Shock factor, yeah. yeah. Cause I, I even wonder sometimes I'm just like, where, where does it go? I mean, the do anal you know cavity I mean? doesn't have an ending, really, but vaginal cavities... Vaginal cavities do. So I don't know how much... I don't know which whole... But I'm thinking she's using <clears throat> both, but, like, that was, like, her whole thing was, like, the bowling pins. And isn't there... There's, a, like, a spot in your asshole where it, like, like curves? So there's, like, kind of that stop valve point. So I guess if you can push past that, but, like, that seems dangerous. Yeah. Too. I wonder how far back the curve goes. <laughs> I just kind of wonder. I'm like, dude, like if it was like a little plastic bowling pin, I'm like, okay, like that's fine. Like yeah. whatever. Like you just like for show, but like it's heavy. It's like dirt. I'm like, I just, I don't understand like how that happens. No. And I, I just wonder like where, where you got to the point, like what did you start with? How did it get to the point of where it is now? Like, so I feel like any of my kinks haven't really progressed too much further past a certain point. <laughs> like, I've never been to the point that I'm like, you know what? I do need an entire forearm of my vagina. I just, and I, that's cool for some people. I just wonder what brings you to that point. Because everybody's got their own thing. And we all but... have our own thing. <laughs> but like, I feel like it's like, do, are you decent? Like, you have to be desensitized. I feel like you would have to be. Like, I don't know at what point you're enjoying that versus just doing it do it i, I think know. it i think at that point like sex for you has to be like like it has to be like a competitive like athleticism to it like you have to keep outdoing yourself yeah yeah yeah. like at that oh. point you're not even like in it for the sexuality you're in it for the competition with yeah. like what more can you're in i it do win. yeah i'm in it <laughs> in to, to win, win it. it and you're not winning an orgasm by any <laughs> means if anything you're just winning a trip to the urgent care and a really <laughs> odd explanation yeah because the bowling ball got lost around the curve <laughs> yeah because it got lost up in there i was just like dude and then he then they were telling me some other things that they saw and i was just like i like i that almost sounds like a horror movie and i love horror movies right everyone yeah. knows i fucking love horror but like that is like real life like that's horrifying it's yeah. not horror it's just it's horrifying because you guys are you guys are self-inflicting this yeah and then i think there was one where they said like i think the person like had sex with the tree but like with like Wait, with what? the bark and things like that and Ugh. just like i was like dude what no i don't like that i don't know how you have sex with a tree now here's the thing did you were you like a grinder did you like grind yourself on things mm -hmm. to get off like back because like i do a I, little bit of everything yeah I, I was humping everything i was just humping away <laughs> it was just like a little like, dog yeah, just, just like one of these cute little dogs <laughs> we were like climbing like swing sets just because of the pole yeah and you think of that with tree and i would like shimmy up trees and stuff and also like feels good but i would not want to fuck a tree that's like seems take like your a panties off no yeah like you're gonna get splinters on your cooch i don't want that Th that's, that's like another thing like i feel like pain has to feel good i think pain feels good in certain aspects but i just feel like sandpaper and or tree bark in your pussy lips i just can't find where there would be a pleasure in that even like a pinch or something maybe that just seems like way too much yeah it just seems like self-harm at that point like if you said oh like if a guy was like oh <clears throat> like i want to stick my dick in like the soft moss and mud you're like okay you're still not well but like i can see that fe still feeling <laughs> yeah, better than you wanting to like <laughs> completely fair you makes, know what i mean it's a lot more like relative to what you yeah because like the mud, squishiness I, the squishiness it, the, suction. the suction from the mud and then the Actually, moss could be like pussy hair or I'd just like right here if i had a dick yeah, yeah you'd fuck some mud you just want to if i had a dick i'd just be sticking it in and sticking everything it in things. everything helicoptering oh yeah the, the helicopter i'm knocking bitches out with them I'm a yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're fighting oh you like this just like i'll do that thing that they do where they're like Rub yeah. it on, on your clit or like slapping you in the face with it. Yeah, like, like yeah. I kind of like getting slapped in the face with dick. It, not it's fun. It is fun. It can be.
It can be very fun. I like. I slap myself in the face with them. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm such a disgusting little whore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ever done the one? <laughs> Where you're like, like, oh, like with, boy, the, yeah. with the. <laughs> we love. Let's <laughs> make it a little tune. <laughs> The warrior call. Ooh, I'm yeah. ready for you. Oh. It's like yeah. when you were a kid, you like breathe into a ceiling or into like one of the oscillating fans. And you're like, oh yeah, Aw. trying to get the sound. Yeah, that's what. That, yeah, that's me. I'm like, and I'm too inquisitive about like, di- like if I like you, I'm very inquisitive about your penis. I want to look at every little bit of it. Oh yeah, I'm like, oh like that's nice. Or like the color pattern there is going on, and yeah. your balls. Like you know, Just I gotta play come, with it. Yeah, I gotta touch the like. It, it's it's a it's a little annoying. I feel like because sometimes. I feel like it comes off as like weird. It's like a little stem toy for me. I'm just like, there's so many different things to touch oh, and boop, boop. lick and press and you know, yeah, <laughs> different textures. <laughs> yeah, like there's like different things going on. Like one ball can like go from one side. Like, uh, like my ex actually did the thing to where he sucked pushed- it up in. Yeah! yeah, I almost started screaming. I almost like I almost fainted. I did too. <laughs> <laughs> because i had never seen it happen before i was like i did that are you okay he's like yeah it just happens sometimes just have to let it go back down I'm like what the fuck i almost passed out i was like this is unreal like i i'm like no 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 like it's just because it's so like like i'm because you're like it's like such a delicate thing yeah like vaginas like we don't have like hanging fruit right and our we vagina just, doesn't can't just like move off into our like, into like our <laughs> side we can't just like look at it just be inside of us <laughs> Like that, like I can't just like I could you imagine like one day like you look down and like your clit's just gone. You can't find it. It's like you find it in your belly button. You're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like you're like in there trying to push it back down. I feel like I would just be stressed. Like who do you call? Like you just ask your friends. Like you know what, girl? Like it actually happened to me too. Yes. Actually, though, weirdly with the clit and the belly button, if. Do you have any, like, stimulation, like, in your belly button? Yes. if I push at the base of my belly button, like, push down, I feel it in my clit. Oh, yeah. Mine is because I have, like, an any outie belly button. So, I still oh. have, like, um skit, like, a nerve, <clears throat> like, like right there. So, it's just, like, yes, I feel it. Yeah. Down there. Because I've yeah. asked some people and they don't. And then I do. And so, I've always been, like, why are the people who can feel their clit through their belly button? It's me. I'm that person. Like, I – because I, I had, like, this guy – um So when I was still dancing and making the transition into adult, this guy, he came in to the strip club I was working at and um, he didn't really say anything. He was just like, he goes, hey, can I see your belly button? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, it's really you. Like, you're really like, you're really August. And I was like, you identify me through my my belly belly button. button. (laughs) That's a true fan. That's a true fan. I was like, I've never talked to this man before, but like the fact that like, you know, you came in to come see me at the club, like, yeah, you know, cause I was like, I get it. Like there could be catfished or people who like look similar to me and they can say, yeah, like I'm her. I actually had a girl who did that um, when I was dancing. So when I was away, she would dance by my, my stripper name was Cinnamon. So she, we looked enough alike. And when guys would get drunk, like they'd be like, obviously same person, but she, instead of us like working together, Cause I'm always like a person. I was like, we can make money doing this, right? Yeah, I'll be your, it up. yeah. Let's hustle it up. She didn't want to do that, so it was more like a competition thing. It felt uh-huh. like you can't be in competition with someone that you're mimicking. That you're mimicking, <laughs> right? So I would come back. And like, remember one of my friends had messaged me. She goes, "Hey, are you working? I didn't know you were back from LA." She was like, "Are you working tonight? I haven't seen you all night." And I was like, "I'm not." working she's like your name is on the board and i was like no and it comes out like this girl was dancing but i I think i just said my name was cinnamon she was like dancing by cinnamon and i'd gotten back and like all these like a couple of my like guys had came back and or like people like i'd seen and they're like oh yeah like they're telling me stuff and i was like we didn't have that conversation like that wasn't me they're like are you sure like you know you're cinnamon right and i'm like yeah like i'm cinnamon but they're like you're cinnamon, but like you're bo- like we know cinnamon. We know the titties. We know the whole thing. We know your voice. It stands out. You're tall. You're like whatever. But this girl was just like pretending to be me, and it was just really weird. And yeah, then like, but then she weird. also ha- like she also didn't like me. But then like I was like, dude, like we could be making money. And I remember like there was like I think she had like had to do the, do the thing to where she had a customer who was like, I think that you guys are both really hot, and I want to do a champagne room. Like he was, and she goes like, who do you want? And she he wanted me. And she had to do like the huffy thing of like, 
Sky wants to do a champagne room with us. Like, you know, da da da. And I was like, okay. And like, of course, like, we played it off. I'm like, girl, we, like, I just wanted to be like, girl, we can team up. Like, this could be a normal thing and we could just like rack it out. But like, I you don't, don't want to. I don't understand that mentality. I feel like we've kind of like talked about this earlier because we've just been talking all day and I love it. But it's like the whole thing of why not? just work together why does everything have to be a competition you're making things so much harder on yourself especially if it's like she clearly admires something about you because she wants to emulate it and like be you essentially and pass herself off as you it's like so why create an issue if you could just use that to both of your advantages yeah you're making it so much harder on yourself and you're never gonna be you yeah unless you're you yeah like and I'm like, dude, like I get like I have like I built up the clientele like I've done the thing or whatever. But like even like when she first started there, I was like very inquisitive and like welcoming or whatever. And then she just got kind of like, I don't know. I, I think that some people, especially when it comes to sex work, I think when people get into sex work, they immediately it, if you're not mentally strong enough within yourself, it's going to be hard because you're going to end up comparing yourself. You're going to yeah. get lost. You're going to create <clears throat> jealousy. There is a sense of competition, especially in the strip club, because you are physically seeing money being spent. And, and it could not be on you. And yeah. it could not be on mm-hmm. you. Right. So you see these girls and like you start to um, dog yourself down and be like, what does this girl have? Or like, she has to be doing something to be making money. She has to be doing all these different things. Like she has to be sucking dick in the back. And Hey, if she is, then let that girl do that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's not, then you can hustle. Like I've but hustled. You could be doing that. You could so be doing you that. You could, you know what I mean? If so you don't the, want to, if you don't cool. want to, that's fine. Find your hustle. And like, there's a lot of girls who don't do that in the strip club or like they just create these, these um these difficulties for themselves and i think that's where people like they don't want to work with you they want to work against you because it's like a like i think women are more competitive to men than men Mm -hmm. and i think like and we're also taught like at a very young age of like you have like this sense of competition like i don't know like if your like mom told you like how to carry yourself and all these different things and shoulders back yeah shoulders back yeah i have scoliosis yeah exactly like and it's like and then you start going to school and then you're like in a click well you don't look like this like you can't be in our click you you don't look like this so you can't be in this click so it's like well fuck dude like now what do i do so i think like that's where that sense of like like competition comes from yeah and i feel like i i i like i'm a competitive person right like i think that's why like my free cams was not Mm -hmm. good for me because there's a monthly ranking system Mm-hmm. And if you're not first, you're last, Ricky Bobby. So, you know, it's like <laughs> it's like that mindset. And it wasn't even necessarily like, oh, like the other girls or whatever, but it was bad for me because I'm like, it's not necessarily, oh, like it's it's me. I'm doing something wrong. And I'd get to like in my own head and all of that kind of stuff. And plus why my ex like drove me for the competitions was yeah. bad. But I like to be in competition with myself. Like if if I do something that I think is cool or that other people think is cool. It's like, well, now I have to amp it up for next time for whatever it is I'm doing. I'm not like, I'm not one of those people that wants to like steal someone's light because it's not mine to have, or I would have it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I'm kind of like, if you can admire someone and you can create something together or work side by side or whatever, then that's cool. But like just envying someone isn't going to bring you anything back but a fucking headache and you're like creating drama for no reason because you could look at someone and admire what they do and be like well I could take some cues from this and then make something for myself Mm -hmm. but otherwise you're just like constantly trying to be someone that you're not and that's not fulfilling yeah that's very true I'm the same way too because I'm like I want to always do better for me because I'm like okay if I can do this I can do that I can always want my body to be better I always want to do like different things for me I always want to like amp up my game and like be better and put out better quality and always like these different things but like I don't look at other girls and be like, I want to take her spot. Like, I don't, I don't see people like that. Like I'll see people as like, Oh, I wonder what they did to get here. And like, I'll see that. I was like, Oh, maybe like they did that and that works for them. But like, that's cool. But like, I see that as like a place like I would like to be at, not like the things that they have, but like you see like the outcome of all the work that they put in more so than actually what they like, what they have, you know, like, I don't want to just be like, Oh, move out the way. I'm just going to like take over your life. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like it's seeing something and thinking like, I want something that's kind of similar to that. But how does that look for my own life? Right. And what what would I have to do to get there? And that's mm-hmm. kind of the way that I look at it. And I think that's way healthier. But it's, it's also like that thing of like we were kind of talking earlier about how some people just kind of 
it's like if people are asking you enough, like too many questions and the questions never stop and it's like they don't want to know how to do something. They just want you to do it for them or oh, to give yeah. it to them. And that is not a mindset that I've had. I'm very much like, oh, like let's work together mm-hmm. to build up something. Sure. But like no yeah. one taught me how to do anything. Yeah. YouTube taught me. Like, yeah. That's how I feel too. Like there's like some days where I'm like, you know what? I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And even like when I was like modeling, even when I started stripping, I didn't know. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go. When I started modeling, of course, like I could watch TV. I could look at magazines. I can go, you know, I was in school at the time for like fashion. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm in it. But like also like I learned, I taught myself. I looked at things that like I, I looked at things and people that I feel like looked were similar to me or similar to my aesthetic or similar to what I had going on and took from that. But also like I always was still myself. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I, and if I don't know something, I will tell people and I know my strengths and I know my weaknesses. Right. Mm -hmm. So sometimes like there's certain things that just like don't click in my brain. Yeah. I will outsource. Like, here's the thing. If I can't do it, if someone who's someone who can help me with it, I was like, I will outsource. I will help you like editing things, putting things together, like filming, like lighting, all that stuff. I was like, I know enough about like lighting and filming and things like that, but like not to the, not to the expertise as like someone else, you know, who can do it like. You, realizing you don't have to do everything yourself but if you know if you know a little bit about a lot then it helps you also when hiring people to outsource and to do know, you know what to what look I mean? for yeah because you know if they're going to be fucking something up because you've kind of already done something enough to a point that you have a general idea of a lot without having to have like all invested in one thing and that's why there are people who exist that you can hire but mm-hmm. it's good to know what you're working with because Shoot, if you don't have any idea about anything going in and you haven't, like, tried and tested it yourself, you're going to get duped so many times as someone who's been duped many times. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, girl, same. I've had that in recent (laughs) times, um, like, putting my faith into a person and and, and things and, like, thinking that they're helping my growth in my career and they're not. And then, like, you you don't think about it. You're like, oh, this person has it. They're doing it. I don't need to check in. I mean, like, when they do check in with you, like, you seem like you have everything under control and then they're just bullshit yeah how many people bullshit you're like oh you just you just try to take advantage of people you're trying to take advantage of me like because you know that we're so busy and like you're managing you know our schedules and like different things like that and you're like you're like nah dude you just fucked me i didn't have time to stop and think about it because i was busy doing other things and Mm. then i stopped and i realized like why are things not adding up in my life and it's like oh it's this one thing it's this one person yeah so, yeah, just like a little bit of mold can make the whole bread go bad because it's like and it's like hunting it down, too, because like when you when you do a lot of content or you're doing a lot of shoots or traveling this and that and you end up meeting so many people, it's kind of all coming at you so fast that you're like it sometimes take you a while to process who the issue is oh yeah you know? and so and it just kind of creates this weird damper where you feel like I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. Why are things not like fitting how they should and you take that one little bit out and you're like oh fuck it's all fine oh yeah like everything was cool it was just that okay it's not me all right i was doing what i was supposed to be doing okay cool cool it has you second guessing yourself when you're like i know how much work i'm putting into this Mm -hmm. what's going on because at at this point i feel like i am fucking something up massively and it's usually just somebody else that you shouldn't have put your trust in. yeah and you're like dude really 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 this is what we're doing today guys yeah. <laughs> so do you it's, have any tips for people who are like because you've been in the industry now you said for what 10 or 11 years yeah it's just like 11 a little over 11 and you've done you've done it all you've done camming you've you've done mainstream you've been a contract star for browsers um mm-hmm. so you've done it all and then but you seem to like the online more than the mainstream i think i've always liked online more than real life <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> like, it's, yeah. it's one of those things though like i think i think what helped me too is starting camming and like you know for as much trauma as my ex gave me i can say that <laughs> i spent a lot of time online and for a long time it was my happy space because i honestly didn't have to be around him as much and there was a lot going on behind the scenes that people didn't know about like you know T- essentially messaging me what to say while I'm online sometimes, which was just a whole head fucking in and of itself. But during the times that I was able to build that like chat room and be working as much as I did, I, 
I kind of created a space and a not necessarily a character because I feel like there's a bit in me, a, like a really big part of me in everything that I do. Mm-hmm. But I was able to kind of cultivate what I was comfortable with and what my boundaries were for certain things, how I carried myself to my specific audience. And then when I was doing things like going to shoot for like mainstream porn and stuff like that, I was like, I don't need this. I'm yeah. doing this to promote myself to a wider audience and kind of get a little bit of a break from camming while Mm -hmm. I also do this. You know what I mean? Like it was more of the experience of doing it. And I think just knowing that I didn't have to rely on a company to promote me and I was doing it really just kind of for paid advertising where I get paid and they're advertising me. You know, I think a lot of people have gone into the industry like, oh, you need to work for this, you know, particular company. You need to make sure that you're working with these performers. And it's like, if they're, that's a good way to get your name out there for sure. But if you're also not like capitalizing on that beforehand and making sure that you're still growing your fan base, like fans don't really care what companies you're shooting for. Mm -hmm. If they're a fan of you, they're a fan of you. So whatever like platform you want to be on, whether it's like fans or loyal fans or only fans or whatever, they will come to find you. They want customs from you. They want Mm -hmm. solo videos of you. It's great to work with other people and with companies if you want to like promote yourself more, but you don't need them, but you have to be willing to work your ass off all the time and treat it like a fucking career and if you're not treating it like a career why the fuck are you in porn yeah exactly (laughs) and it's the only thing that you're going to be really qualified for unless you start your own small business someday yeah that's about it because like there's no once you do it you can't half-ass it Mm -mm. and you you can't, can't you can't take it back and you can't take it back so that's what i'm saying it's like when you do it you have to go all in because like there's no turning back like you said unless you're going to start your own business and like that's probably the only way out of like if you're an escort or a stripper or you know there's like things that you can do behind the scenes if you're a sex worker that you have no proof of that's fine that's whatever you can lie on your resume no one's going to go back and say call like say let's say oh i worked at the mall do you really think they're going to fucking call and care No. no You can still go live your life, and I have a lot of friends who do that. But when you do porn, when you do camming, you are out there forever. You don't know who's in there with their phone recording you on their phone and a live stream. Like, you just don't know. And it's like, that's why you have to go hard. And I hate it. My biggest pet peeve is, like, when people are like, ah. Like, my nine to five sex, I'm just going to start an OnlyFans. Uh, I'm like, dude, you are going to be... No, don't quit. You're, You're going to be working 24-7, <clears throat> 398 days of the year. Like, you're working. Like, yeah. you are constantly you are constantly working, coming up with new content, <clears throat> um, satisfying, like, your... your, your your um your fans needs and then also like marketing yourself if you don't even have something where you've started from and you're just gonna go in and think like it's just like i'm gonna post a picture of my boobs and i'm gonna make a thousand dollars it's like no you're not go fuck yourself you're gonna have to start doing it a lot more fucking yourself for money because it's not like anyone that thinks it's easy is like it, it just makes me cringe so hard because i I just know the amount of time that I spent. Like, I had no idea what the fuck I was doing when I first started camming. Like, I I did stripping for, like, a hot minute. And it was terrible. And I, like, I had no idea. Like, my first song I ever danced to was Whistle. Mm -hmm. I think by Flowrider or something like that. (laughs) And I was, like... I had I I just know it was terrible. I, there's no playback reel. I can't see it, but I know it was bad. Camming wasn't any better. I was doing my makeup like bright red lipstick, thick wing eyeliner like every fucking day. It was atrocious. Yeah. But I kept trying. I had to teach myself makeup. I taught myself how to edit. I taught myself how to use cameras and how to do lighting and and every little thing that I possibly could because I was like, well, I'm doing this. This is on the internet now, and it always will be. So Mm -hmm. you have to keep going because there isn't an alternate route at that point. And the money can be very good, but that's also not guaranteed. But it's also not going to just come to you. Like, I even hate the misleading articles of like, you know, X and X made like however many millions of dollars on OnlyFans, like, or $300,000 a month or whatever. And it's like, I guess there is the potential for that. But usually if it's someone who's just like a pop-up celebrity or some shit like that, It's not going to be consistent forever because once people have seen what they want and they realize that that's all it was was just a couple nudes or Mm -hmm. like whatever, 
they're not interested because it's like you have to put your personality into things. It's not like you're just an actor who shows up and here's a script that's already been written for you. And, and once you clock in for the day and you do your lines and everybody goes home and then you wait for the movie to come out. And I know that there's more that goes into like a full movie than just yeah, one yeah, day exactly. of whatever. Yeah. But with creating your own content, you have to be doing that all the time. You are the idea man. Mm -hmm. you're the one who's running it past you know whatever all the different rules are because there are different rules to what you can release for porn and on what sort of platforms and compliance and paperwork Mm -hmm. and figuring out how to not get fucked on content so many people that i knew back from way back in streaming days there was no paperwork like and now it's it's like a big thing so you have to stay up to date on all of that you have to know a little bit about editing because you can't necessarily just trust somebody that says that they can edit videos to edit content in a way that you're going to like or that shows yeah. you well. You have to figure out how to shoot stuff for yourself, especially going into, like we said earlier, about getting a photographer or videographer to help. It's like if you're already aware of how to do something on your own as well, you're not going to let someone that you hire push you around to do something that you don't want to do or right. that they say is going to be better. You're like, no, I'm paying you because I already know what I want. I'm right. paying you for the convenience. I'm not having to do it myself. Yeah. But if you know what you're doing, then you're not going to get fucked over as often because yeah. you can also just leave and be like, if you're going to give me this shit that I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to go film it at home by myself and go fuck yourself. Like, yeah. yeah. And I think like another, like that's it. I'm glad you said that. Cause I think another thing too, is like, there's people that you could hire and you do have to start from the bottom. I tell you, you got to start from your shitty cell phone videos and you don't understand the lighting. I look back at some of my content. And I'm like, Oh wow. That was, that was bad. But also some people really like that amateur aspect of it. They love it. I have a uh, 480p webcam video where my foot is wrapped in a bandage and that's like the forefront of the video. And that one keeps circling everywhere. Like, it's not, it, it's a, like a wood panel room. I'm on the floor. Yeah. Don't look for it. It's yeah, they're nuts. like, everyone's like, yeah, dude, them jacking off. Like, dick's getting hard already. Just thinking about foot. it. <laughs> yeah. I remember I've had ones where, like, I will be doing something and it's like, back into my older videos, it's like, oh, well, my closet door is just wide open. My laundry basket's overflowing. My cat's in the background licking his balls. Like, it's just, like, all this, like, crazy Not stuff. Not professional at Not all. Not professional at all. Like, now it's, like, now, it, you know, now that you get better and better and better, I'm getting so good with, like, doing amateur videos. Like, the, you know, like, the high-end amateur. And mm-hmm. then, like, now it's, like, okay, now I'm, you know, collabing and working with other people. And, you know, you always upgrade your cameras and you always upgrade this. And, okay, if you don't want, if you don't want to keep upgrading your stuff because you're, like, okay, maybe it's, like, time for me to get someone who I can hire that's going to help me but it's like you have to build a team and you have to build a net like a um like understanding because sometimes you might hire people and it's like just because what you think works for another girl that you've shot with because like that's what their <coughs> brand is it doesn't it's not like just one thing across the board it's like giving it's a like girl a an orgasm yeah like everyone's different so that's why you have to be open to ideas and open to like working with different people but maybe yeah. sometimes like a videographer or photographer might tell you something that's like you're like oh i didn't think that because you like because sometimes you're like oh um like I've, I've done modeling for so long, but sometimes like I'll work with people and they're like, oh, just like do this. And it's like, oh, I see. Cause you see me, you see me, you see me through a lens. I can't really see me. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's like, oh, like that makes a world of difference. Like don't try and change my whole thing, but like yeah. you're trying to give me little advice to, um, to do better. Yes, exactly. And I think it's, it's good to, to work with people like that too. Like, cause I, I like to just ask questions. I remember one of the first times I had my makeup done professionally, was like for my penthouse shoot and I had no real idea about makeup I found I was doing it all wrong and (laughs) all I did I just pestered the person I'm sure I'm sure they just hated me by the time they're done with makeup because like what's that and what's that brush for and what's this ask fucking questions especially if you're being if you're paying someone to like do something Mm -hmm. annoy them I don't care because then you won't have to hire them again if they're not down to like share their knowledge about something then it's not someone I want to work with anyway because I'm all about like sharing the ideas and knowing a little bit because then also it's like if if you know something about something if they miss it you can let them know it's a better process overall it's just like communication yeah it's the biggest fucking thing and if you're not willing to learn then it's probably not the job for you to have because you have to do so much of it yourself if you really want to like drive yourself forward and not have to rely on other people because yeah. having to rely on too many people is like it's too many cooks in the kitchen you know what yeah. I mean it's not it's not going to be beneficial and you're going to end up like spending more money than it's worth to continue hiring people who aren't who don't necessarily have like 
your best interests at heart anyway yeah and failing trust yeah. me I've, i'm in the <clears throat> middle of like and it's not necessarily re- rebranding i won't say it's rebranding it's still on par with what i've done but it's also like taking a step back because it was like oh i was like doing so much and doing too much when it was like i I was doing things right in the beginning. Like, I don't mean that there's a right way or wrong way. I say what was right for me. It's like, oh, I was on the right path. But then I got like so overwhelmed and like listening to too many people and like thinking that I was like, you know, doing all this other stuff that like was working for other people. But it was like, oh, but that's not me. So now things are like, we're looking a little bit. I don't know, convoluted. But now it's like, oh, now we're back. Now we're back. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I can just like take things down and see like the whole picture. Now I've got like a fresh set of eyes. Now I've got my manager who is like, you know, a new manager that I've I've been working with and she's she's amazing. She comes from like the mainstream um side of things and I don't mean just like mainstream porn, I mean like mainstream commercial, nothing to do with adult and it's just like It's nice when you see someone who's like, girl, I see you and I see so much from you. And what you were doing before you even got into adult is like you could have just kept you can just keep doing that. Like like you don't need to do so much. You don't need to do so much like, wow, like uh, shock value. Yeah. You know, because I feel like I think nowadays, even within myself, it's like do the shock value thing. Do just like be this thing. It's like, no, like as much as I am August Sky and I am a performer, I do do other things than just suck dick and eat coochie. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And then, I do more things than that. And, I am a person. And people want to like, like, especially companies, it feels like they just want to lock you into a box with that sometimes. And it's like, cause that's how they see you. Cause they're, and I mean, I guess in some ways, rightly so, cause they're a company trying to make money, but it's kind of like, you could be making money on your own that you can make content for yourself that you don't just get a day rate for. You get to sell for as long as you're selling content. Mm -hmm. It's like you're, you know, just continually making money for yourself by doing the content. And while it's great to have stuff with studios, the studios don't really care. No. About, because you're replaceable. Like we're replaceable to studios. Mm -hmm. And maybe a little less so now that more people are starting on the content creation curve of actually producing their own stuff and figuring out that they can do it themselves. But for the most part, it's like you should kind of be using that more as an opportunity to kind of promote yourself or to even network with other people to make content with because yeah. it's like it, it's usually not even worth the the day rate to yeah. spend your whole day like on set and then also like with the the price of testing that's gone up and all the different oh, requirements yeah. that change all the time and I'm not saying that you know like testing people shouldn't be testing because that's not what I'm saying at yeah. all the testing yeah. is very important but it has gotten more expensive than even when I first started like yeah. doing that kind of stuff and now we have like mgen and all this other crazy mm-hmm. stuff and if you can make content on your own even just solo stuff i know it seems like to some people like so silly that people would want to jerk off to solo content but usually with things like fansly loyal fans only fans they're there specifically for you so you don't even have to be smashing generals with other people like you can no. once in a while and then it's something that's new and exciting because you haven't done it in a while and you can almost kind of like hold back a bit more and kind of charge more what you feel is worth your time to be doing. Mm -hmm. And fans are more willing to pay it than a company will. Oh yeah. Because a company doesn't care what you think something is worth. They put a value on you. Yeah. They put a value on you. And I think what I've learned in my first couple of years in the industry is like, do I like going to set some sets? I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. And I'm very particular with companies that I work for and my agent um, who does all my bookings for those. She knows that. So I know when I go to set, I know what teams I want to work with. I know what companies and, you know, she's very like, Oh, we're here's like this company, you know, this, and then she'll break it down. And she's like, you can say yay or nay. I know you're going to say nay to this. And it's like, but at least I'm still going to ask you and give you the opportunity. So, but I know the, when I go to set for these companies and these directors that I that I like working for, it is because it's a good. I know it's going to be a quality scene. Mm-hmm. I know it's going to be a good day, yeah. and it is nice to actually be on a set to where it is probably the closest thing I've been on to like a movie set to yeah. where like they make you feel great. It's almost like a family feeling. Like, what do you need? Like, what do you want to eat? Like, let me do make it. And- yeah, like look at all this stuff. Like, and we're in like it's like they're always so excited to see me. And it's like, okay, like that's gonna make a great scene. Like, oh, like that was so satisfying for me today. Like, you know, and I and you know, I do have like my scene partners that like I love seeing again, you mm-hmm. know? And it's like 
all that. So I do have days like that where I do love still going on mainstream sets. Mm -hmm. Um, But also too, like I am backing away from it, like looking at it again with like another pair of fresh eyes. Like I said, like when I've just kind of had like time to really reevaluate and see where I want to take my career next. Mm -hmm. And then that's where the self-creation comes in. Mm -hmm. Right. Because there's a lull in the industry right now, because like you said, they know that people are finding their worth. Yeah. And Now they're you, instead of like these people who have put in all this work to be porn stars, like you know the people who come in and like they've been in the industry for a long time and like they just want to be porn stars, like mm-hmm. that you know they came in before OnlyFans was OnlyFans, right? So it's like now they're getting pushed to the side after doing all this and like you know leveling up their career the way like they thought it was gonna work, and now you bring in like these pop up people. And I have nothing. I'm not saying like this is a bad thing. I know it sounds like I'm against one or that, but I'm not. I'm saying is what the industry. It's not the it's not the performers. No, it's the industry. who are bringing in these people who are just swaying people to the side because they want views and numbers. But like, if you bring in this person who has this massive following, they're going to save their best work for their following. They're going to come into set and be like, well, you said like, I just came here for advertisement because Mm -hmm. it's going to be cool because I'm going to advertise that more on my platform. So it's going to bring you guys more money, which is like, you guys just want the money aspect of it. And like, I understand that because business is business, but like, I think there should be a way to like make it merge. But I've, I've been on sets now and like, you can just see the quality of things going down. Cause there's like directors, like I love shooting for, and it's because like they put out quality work and now they're stressed out because they're getting a bigger work chunk load. of workload. And now the quality, like now they're stressing. I was like, they don't want their quality to go down. So I feel like right now quality is just going down in the industry. And a lot of the wayside performer, like a lot of the porn stars are going, you know, to the wayside. So now they just have to kind of yeah. find people who are like willing and able, like who hasn't, who can we manip not manipulate, but who can we get to fill this role who doesn't know yet about uh, branding and only fans yeah. and like, you know what I mean? But like, we can still pay them that rate. They're not going to complain about it. Cause they like in their brain, like it's amazing money. I've never made this kind of money before. Yeah. I'm going to do this scene because I don't know what I'm doing yet with my career. Yeah. Does that make sense? No. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think for me too, like I under, like I like, I like the mainstream set. Like when I first started shooting with like Brazzers Mikey, I was like, this is so cool. Cause it does, it feels like you're in a movie. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And then it was like, I started like learning like what I liked about sets, what I didn't like about sets. And now you're kind of reaching this point too, that I feel like even like some directors and like just videographers and photographers, you can just hire them. And you can make your own exactly. set day. Yeah. So, and it's becoming this point that like they need work too because they're not getting paid shit by companies because like when revenue is down. So it's like there's always people around who are willing to work and who will make it a good experience to do so. And for people who aren't aware of this, like that kind of stuff, when you are paying people to work with you on projects and things like that, that I, I'm, I'm not like super well versed in this is why I have an accountant like business manager, but it goes into part of like helping to lower your tax burden because mm-hmm. you are using profits to pay people to do work that you would not have made those earnings without said people. And so it ends up, you know, working out better in your favor come tax season. And, you know, when you kind of realize that you can take whatever vision you have, and as long as you know some people who can help bring it to fruition, then you can kind of have your own magical movie set days and not have to worry about like, a potential pervy director or you know just someone that you're not vibing with on set and by no fault of anyone's you know yeah no anyone in particular but like you can pick the people who you surround yourself with yeah and it didn't used to be as big of a thing like before only fans and like more of the clip site stuff people were kind of more like to themselves or just on set you know you had cam girls and porn stars and now there's so much like overlap because people yeah. are kind of realizing oh you can just do whatever you want. Yeah. And <laughs> like, like within the confines of, of like, you know, like understanding. And all that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah and, understanding, and boundaries yeah. and stuff. And I, but I don't go to talent testing very often. Um, but when I, when I was for browsers and stuff all the time, like there was always a bunch of people in there. Mm-hmm. Like it was always full. There was always like a wait. Now there's like no one ever there. Like no matter what time of day I'm there, which I find very weird. And I just feel like there's kind of been like a downturn in people shooting mainstream, even like friends that I've 
had who did mainstream are doing either way less of it now or just focusing on their own content. Yeah. And I think it's kind of like, and you keep hearing stuff come out about people like faking tests and this drama with this director and this drama with this performer. And I think there's a lot of people who are just kind of sick of that. Yeah, I think a lot of people are sick of, are, are definitely um, sick of that. I think what it is, is like, so this is what I'll tell people when you come into the industry. So I would, I did OnlyFans when OnlyFans first was like taboo and it came out and I was just modeling and I was just like selling my own sexy photos or whatever. And I was charging $50 a month subscriptions mm -hmm. back when that was like cool. I was like one of the cool girls. And then like, you know, kind of went up, kind of went down, went up, went down, went up, went down. And then like when you start, when I started doing porn, they don't tell you to also be focusing still on your online presence, like building a brand. They just mm -hmm. want you to shoot as much as possible. So then you're booked and busy because you're new. And then if you're a good performer, you're even booked and busy even more, right? So you're like thinking, I'm just going to go to the top. I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to go to the top. And you, you put everything else to the wayside. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh my God, I forgot about everything else because I have been getting you, like these companies views. And they're like, oh my God, like you're getting us views, like all your, all your scenes, all always have great numbers so they're gonna because it's making them money right but you're also thinking that you're making money because you're booked and busy but like at the end of the day after you've paid your 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 testing fees after you have paid your agency and then you're like damn I did like this great work for these companies thinking like I'm gonna be a great performer I'm trying to be a good business person right I want to I always want you guys to book me but then it's like oh I gave my best scene to them now I'm too tired to go home and work on myself and yeah. my brand and all those different things and then you become a good performer and not a good business person and not in a, a good way business. because you lose the focus on your business and you're just like because it does feel like and they do keep you busy and set days are usually so freaking long and even yeah. now like you said they're packing sometimes like two to three into like one director's day and mm -hmm. it's like they're back in the day it was like just one day or yeah. maybe two days or three if it was like a production you yeah. know but like and you think about how much time that you're just kind of spending on sets and then it's like people i don't know what people think they're gonna get like there's no royalties there's no royalties in porn no it's just if a one ever, time ever was a thing it's definitely not anymore so anyone out there who thinks that there's royalties in porn there's not unless you're making your own content but when companies keep you busy and agencies keep you busy because agencies don't want you shooting your own content they don't make money off of that yeah they just want they need their they, dollar they need you to keep getting booked endlessly by companies and if you're too busy making them money mm -hmm. then you're not making any money for yourself because you're like sacrificing your best years in the industry to companies that you will never see anything outside of your fucking day rate and if you had taken all of those days and shot even half of the content you would have made like at least twice the amount of money because at least you get to sell it forever. Because mm -hmm. it's like you get, it's like the, when people want to log in to OnlyFans and be like, I'm going to show my titties and make five grand. It's like, well, it might be the only five grand you ever make. Yeah, because I was like, okay, but titties and what? We can see titties everywhere. I can Google titties and titties is going to pop up. Yeah. I can go to a, I can go to a plastic surgeon's website and look at titties all day. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I can go and look at porn for free all day. And the one thing that I, that I found is like, they say that like the industry people like the rates always have been the same since like the 90s and 2000s like it's gone up a bit and like Just girls like are minimum wage <laughs> yeah yeah exactly i feel like the girls like there's girls like me or like there's girls are like we're charging more and like now it's like okay now if you want these good performers who have put in this work now i'm going to start charging more because now it's like no i can make my day rate off of selling a video i can make my day rate off of having a skype conversation with a fan mm -hmm. a custom sale a, a custom whatever. sale as long you as know? i put in the time on my business mm -hmm. i'm gonna make money on that forever and then it's like even like you think i make a video and i'll sell it to this person maybe you can sell it higher for a little while and then you can sell it for less money as it, as more people yeah. have seen it and then you don't sell it for two years and all of a sudden you have a re-release of your old content because you have new fans by that point because people mm -hmm. get bored people cycle out people go people come back and it's like if you just have a constantly if you're constantly evolving yourself and evolving your own content and working on yourself then there's never not going to be a way for you to monetize something as long as you're willing to put in the effort but so many people aren't because it's like you could turn like you know that you want to do with other stuff too where it's not just porn 
But you want to take that following and take your knowledge that you've gained from other things to put that into something else. I feel like so many people are so short-sighted with just like, I'm just going to do porn. And it's like, well, cool, but what else? Yeah, you're like, but what else? Like, what else can we do here, right? (laughs) And uh, I guess like on one of like the final, what I was going to say earlier is like when I was talking to the director, um, he was like, what makes people feel bad is like some of these companies that they want to work for, like these big name companies, you know, like your mind geek and all those places. It's like girls, they make it feel like you're on the outside and you can't get in. Like, and like a click like a click. Mean girls of porn. Yeah, the mean, like it feels like the mean girls of porn. And it's like they create that. And like now these girls are these performers, guys or girls are they they seek their value in their career by the names of these companies that they work with. So like if you don't work with them, they're starting to think like they're not a great performer. Then they end up doing more stuff. They sell themselves short. Now you're not making money at all because you've done everything and now there's nothing to sell. And you still haven't worked for this company. So I think like we put a lot of these performers are putting value in there's there's a lot of there's a lot of girls who started and signed when I signed Mm -hmm. with the same agency. When they signed with Motley, they were number one. It was a whole thing. And then there was a whole scandal of it blowing up, falling apart. And now it's just a mess. Right. And all of us were new girls and didn't really have the know how or the the skills or the networking to like reach out to companies and all these different things. All of us were just kind of like, what? and in that process there was girls who figured it out like myself I figured it out I networked I got myself I was able to self-book for a long time and and when I say long time this has happened over the course of like maybe six months it to feels like, like a, year. a long time it feels like a long it. time right so I'm I like okay I've been in for 11 years you yeah it feels like like that like, like that a little blip boop, right so I'm like thinking hair. to myself like okay we're gonna do this but there's girls who they just quit doing it because like they didn't know and they just went back to like whatever it was that they were doing and then there's girls who are stuck in limbo <laughs> And they just can't get out of limbo because they don't know how to market themselves to do their OnlyFans and all that stuff because they still have this desire to still want to work in the mainstream porn industry. And but like these companies just aren't coming to them. Here's the thing, too, is like it's like they're caring about the brand. Right? Exactly. But they're not caring about the right brand. And if you're a performer, the right brand to care about is your brand, whatever the it. fuck that is, because if you don't build your own brand then the brands that you want to work for aren't going to want to work with you. And if you build your brand correctly, by the time you've built up your brand to a point that the brands that you care about are like, hey, we want you to work with us, you're not going to need them. Mm-hmm. So you'll be doing them a fucking favor at that point. Yeah. And then won't you feel a lot better? Than, it's like it's like chasing after a guy who doesn't want you or something like that. Yeah. Or like chasing after a girl who doesn't want you, vice versa, whatever it is. Because it's like, it's an endless loop of like, you, you look and I don't mean this to sound like any which way, but it does make you look desperate. Yeah. And it's also taking all of your energy and focus instead of putting that into yourself and into your own work and into your own business. Because you're not looking at it like a business. You're looking at it like a popularity contest. That's and a, nobody yeah. wins a popularity contest. No one wins a po- – because there's no <laughs> Miss Popular or Mr. Popular or that popular, like, that person. Like, because it's always changing. Your yeah. reign's always going to change. Like, yep. it's, it's just always that. So – I, create a desire, I guess, is what we're trying to say. Create a desire for people to want to come work with you. And when you do come in, you're like, oh, like they see you building this thing, you're this empire for yourself. They see that, oh, like you are getting um, feedback. Fans love you. People are like responding. People are commenting. People are interacting with you. People like love you. I want to work with that person. Then you can come in and say, okay, if you want to work with me, then guess what? You're going to do this. We're going to pay this. This is my rate. And now you've created that demand for these companies to mm-hmm. look at you if that's your desire. And I've like tried to help people out with that. And they just, they don't know. Some people like you just, you're just like, you know what? I tried, but you're going to have to figure that out for yourself. self. And it's like, if I can give you so much information without telling you, you know, like verbatim, like, like, let me take your foot and put it here. Let me take your foot yeah. and put it here. Well, it's like full circle you know? to like what we started with, where it's like, if, if people are asking too many questions, they don't want to learn how to do it. They want you to do it for them. Because yeah. at that point, you're not really asking questions to gain knowledge. You're being like, oh, daddy, help me. Yeah. And, and I, don't, not, I don't fuck with that. I don't fuck with that either. And I guess like, I don't like the poor me mentality. If I yeah. try to gas you up and it's like, but now, I mean, it's like, really? Like, I'm like, just poor me. And it's like, you know what? Fuck off. Poor you. Yeah, you suck. Yeah. Fuck off. Being, you know what being I mean? a victim is not a personality. Yeah, like, being and a victim. No. I can't, I can't no. mess with it. Like, it's too, maybe I'm too old. Maybe I'm too cynical. I don't know. But at least like, I know 
that I have a way that I like my brand to be. I know a way to market myself. I know a way that I like my business to work. And that's the way that I look at it is a business, a career. And I never know what curve it's going to take next because I'm not like closed off from like where it could go or maybe where it hasn't gone or I'll never go there again because that's stupid. Like there could be a new opportunity that you're just like locking away because you're too focused on like someone who doesn't care about you essentially you know what I mean? yeah like, exactly it's like a toxic relationship and I guess we're all working through our toxic relationships but um yeah yeah, y- yeah. so we're out here we're doing it we're trying different things and like also like don't limit yourself to just the adult side get no. creative it's like we're in the day and age of social media you can do anything if you still want to do fashion workouts food anything like do the things that you like to do on top of it too like you don't have to just always be out here just being oh, that you know have so personality because you, you have a personality you have things that you like you have things you enjoy and when you enjoy doing something it's just like people can tell in a in a sex scene if you're not enjoying it they can tell they don't like it as much mm-hmm. if you have a hobby that you like doing do it people are going to be like, oh, that's so interesting. And and it, it does humanize you. And I think that it creates a stronger fan base if they think that you, not think that you are because you are a real person, but if you present yourself as I'm a real person with not necessarily like, and, and real problems exist, but not yeah. making problems your personality, then it's like, oh, you have things that challenge your mind outside of getting your holes filled. And how? Isn't that cool? Like- isn't that cool? Because no matter what, even like when you're in a relationship, a healthy relationship, which we are all searching for in a yeah. certain aspect, because trust me, we've been in some toxic shit. Yes. And I feel like at the end of the day, you want a healthy relationship with yourself because you're always going to be fighting yourself. We are our own problem. Yeah. That's what I'm going to realize. Problem. I'm the biggest problem. I know that. And I think that like, once you figure that out and you're just like, okay, well, I don't want to be this. Oh, it's like, oh girl, it was you. Yeah. You're like, you look in the mirror and you're like, mm, okay. <laughs> like, I identify gonna, as a problem. <laughs> yeah. I, I identify. Okay. We're going to work on it, girl. But yeah. um, do you have any last words for our fans? I feel like we can talk for hours and hours. We really and could. Hours. Um, we have been. We have been. We've been talking like all, all day. day. We've done I feel nothing. Like I need today. like more water. <laughs> yes, I've just been like. There was earlier we were talking, and I had to pee for like forty minutes, but it was such a good conversation. I was like, I'm just gonna sit here. I'm, I'm gonna all, keep on. <laughs> I'll open my mouth, baby. Just. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, you gotta go to the bathroom. I'm so crazy. I'm a toilet. Yeah, just I, piss I on me. Just, yeah, I don't piss a toilet. <laughs> I'm a human toilet. <sighs> and here we are. And yeah, let's make it nasty. But yes, any last words for our fans other than you wanna, I want you to pee on me? Um, that was well, my last word. I want you to pee on me. Okay, well, for <laughs> me, um, well, goddamn, just be the brand that you want to pursue. I know that sounds stupid, but like, Seriously, you're a lot cooler than you give yourself credit for and trying to conform isn't going to work for you and you're going to be miserable. (laughs) You are going to be miserable. Trust me, I tried to do that before and it's just like, no, I was like, I'm just going to be hot and like, that's it. I don't want to have to like deal with like people judging me and my person i'm like i'm weird i get that but like yep. i don't want them to see that because if i'm weird the guys are gonna be like well she's not hot she's just weird and it's like i'm gonna be hotter and weirder more I'm than gonna ever get hotter and weirder that's the, the goal 30 was like we're hot and we're weird but like yeah. we're doing it now i'm unhinged so we're getting there <laughs> mental health is a little bit stronger now so it's that makes me yeah it's like there's days we're working on it we're working on it but you know <laughs> you can tell by my podcast what kind of mood we're in me yep. and my multiple personalities we we hash it out oh, i feel you on that <laughs> <laughs> but tell everyone where they can find you and yeah okay. um i also host a podcast a totally wholesome not dirty podcast which you'll be on very soon um you can follow me on instagram at this redhead is sfw and on tiktok at leave molly alone Mm, that's pretty much it that's all my links you guys can find through there and you guys won't be disappointed (laughs) i promise (laughs) but until then stay hustling my little bunnies and i will see you guys soon Hustle.